Radio, where we now turn our attention to your personal finances. Edmund Greaves is co-editor at Mouthy Money. Joins me now. Edmund, good morning to you. Good morning, James. So uh, there's a lot of discussion in the papers about different places uh, and the green list and the amber list and whether there's other places. Should be. Anyway, we've got the green list. There aren't many countries on it. And I'm assuming that if, you've, if you uh, want to book a flight to any of these particular places, boom, they've gone right up. Yeah, that's right. So we had obviously the announcement um, on Friday of, of the kind of the first tranche of green listed places. So that's places where if you go there on holiday uh, this summer, you won't have to quarantine on the way home. Um, so that and that, the main ones being Portugal, uh, Gibraltar and Israel. So Skyscanner has some has some data on this um, and looking at uh, Madeira in particular, actually, um, which is kind of the Portuguese island, um, bookings jumped by s- over 600 percent on Friday. So I think that the odds of getting a getting a flight out there are probably going to be pretty low now. Uh, similar sort of picture for Gibraltar, which was up over 300 percent and Israel bookings were up over uh, just under 300 percent. So, yeah, those kind of obviously there's a lot of a lot of pent up demand there for people who want to get get abroad and that kind of thing. Um there's no kind of indication at the moment from the government who's going to be on there next. Obviously, you can go to far flung destinations like the Falklands, but that perhaps not a realistic choice for most people. Um, I don't think there's but, a direct flight there. I think that's part of the problem. Yeah, exactly. Um, there, there, there are other potential options. So um, Iceland uh, is expected to, to, to emerge uh, and then uh, even Spain and France, Italy and the US. Uh, the uh, kind of uh, watchers are hoping that by June they'll they'll be on there too. So it's one to keep an eye out for. Uh, obviously, don't book anything before any announcements are made because you never know. You do never know. I mean, I'm waiting to see. So I've got a, a long uh, booked holiday which has been uh, which has been sat there waiting. Having yeah. said that, I've spoken to the hotel and they said, look, if the conditions don't change, then you can you can move it. And I think quite a lot of hotels and, and resorts are being uh, really quite flexible. But as you say, uh, don't necessarily start going out and booking because you'll uh, you you could very well be caught out. Meanwhile, I, I'm sorry to be uh, to sound bored here, but we seem to have one of these blooming stores every day. The Royal Mint have launched a new 50p coin, and oh, it could be worth some more money. I mean, really. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, I think I'm I'm going to give you sceptical take on it th- this morning. Um, so, so uh, the Royal Mint has, has launched a new 50p coin. Obviously, there's a few of these stories floating around at the moment. Um, they, they've launched a, an exclusive one of, uh, featuring Scottish inventor John Logie Baird, who obviously uh, was famous for having invented television, analog television to be specific. Um, they're not going into circulation, so you have to buy one from the Royal Mint directly. It's a 50p coin that you buy for £10. You know, it's not, unless you're really kind of a collector, it's not, you know, not a, not a great thing to, to go after. So you're unlikely to get it in your change. Uh, but if you do, supposedly it could sell for, you know, uh, uh, on eBay for a significant amount of money. Um, uh, because, you know, other coins in the past that are very rare have done so. But that is no indication that you will you know get uh you know 500 quid for your 50p coin okay great i always enjoy a 50p story (laughs) right let's talk about first time buyers uh more likely to be rejected for a mortgage than a year ago i mean this situation isn't uh easing up and what i find so extraordinary is um, we've got supply on the increase. We've got housing builders who say they've got permission for a, a million houses. They're not building them. Uh, we've still got the market rising. If you have a look at the stats for the UK, uh, prices rose by 8% in the last year. Uh, the, the market isn't functioning properly. And then you have a look at the mortgage market and it's an indication as to why not. I mean, this is a problem. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I think it's an it's an indication of it's going to leave a bad taste in a lot of you know people's mouths. I think the the stats are that uh, first time, about only about one in five first time buyers are, are getting a mortgage on the first attempt at the moment, which is is down from about fifty percent. Uh, you know, before the pandemic. You know, as you say, this is this is kind of the crux of, mm. of the issue for first time buyers. It's it's the mortgage market, it's affordability criteria and that kind of thing. Uh this is these are stats from Aldermore Bank. Um there's a few different reasons why people are getting rejected. Um one of the main ones are uh poor credit history, not having a large deposit large enough deposit, um having a large amount of debt. Uh, too many credit card applications. I mean, I think the the message here for anyone who's a first time buyer who's looking to get on the ladder is, you know, you really got to tidy up, 
your, your credit as much as possible, right. you know, make it look as good as you can uh, and, and even check your credit score and make sure there's no errors on there at all. Okay, Edmund, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. That's Edmund Greaves, co-editor at Mouthy Money.